Okay, and we are almost ready to roll here. Just got to do a couple things. Game video. Here we are. Let's get some of these other windows resized real quick. No, I try. I'm trying to make them the same width. Close enough. All right, but well, we got to go over here. That's better. And uh, it'd be nice if we could hear the game too, right? So welcome back to Jump King. Not the cats. <laughs> If you're unfamiliar with this game, Jump King is a trolley rage game. Um, it is very simple in its concept. There is only jump. You move in. You move in very fixed uh, jump arcs. You can adjust the power of your jump, but you have no midair control. And uh, if you miss a jump, the consequences can erase minutes or hours or days of your progress. If you'll notice the left-hand side of this building, there's a channel, a vertical channel that's all the way open. That is so that you are able to fall a very, very long way down if you miss, if you miss a jump in the wrong spot. I have been working at this game for a very long time. It includes three separate quests. This is quest number three of three. Um, I have been working on this quest for 116 hours. <laughs> we have played this game 40 different nights on the stream. <laughs> and I'm still going. So, uh, you know, we're going to give it an hour or so tonight. It'll be a pretty short, it'll be a pretty short night with this one tonight. But, uh, I just don't, I don't want to completely rust over. So, that's, uh, I want to give it just a little bit of time. Um, yeah, game hunting, game hunting is, is a lot rougher than it used to be if you're, if you're looking to collect physical retro games in a lot of areas. Well, there's still some places where you can go on a hunt and get something nice, and like every now and then I'll find something at a yard sale that's kind of cool, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare nowadays. A lot of stuff is over, a lot of stuff is overvalued. Nar says, I'm lucky enough to have a pretty good classic gaming scene out here. There are meetups and events throughout the year. It helps if you're looking for something in particular. Now, <laughs> what, what buzzer do I use to shave my head? <laughs> um, I don't, I actually don't know. It's something real cheap. It's something real cheap that just runs on, uh, it's, it's, it's something real cheap that just runs on two AA batteries. Yeah. Uh, my hair used to be real thick. I used to I used to have real thick hair once upon a time. <laughs> Not quite so much. Not so not quite so much as I used to, but you know, what you gonna do? Uh What? What? 
what what bad what bad behavior has has Jump King brought out in me? I like my hair. I'm an, I'm an old man, but still have thick hair. I like it short. I crave the thinning. <laughs> Chasing losses. Uh. I mean, the goal. The goal is still to win this game. <laughs> the the goal is still to eventually win. I'm sure this streamer is built for this after watching Punch Out. I uh I've I've had I've gone through I've gone through some experiences playing Jump King. So uh <clears throat> on my first playthrough, I actually ended up doing the DLC map before I did the main game map. And uh my first playthrough took 93 hours. And it took, it was 93 hours across several months. I was, uh, I was not playing this game regularly. I was, I was playing it for stretches here and there across several months. And I was lost in deep despair for most of the playthrough. <laughs> I did not see, I did not see any hope of ever, of ever making it all the way to the top of the map. I don't know. I don't know what power kept me going for that long. <laughs> but uh but after I did, after I finally beat, after I finally beat it for the first time, it was a uh It was I, I don't even I don't even know what what the right adjective is. It was a I don't know, a rejuvenating experience. It was miraculous. It was, it was, a. Uh, it, it completely changed me. Uh, it completely changed me. I'm never the same after, after beating Jump King for the first time. I'm never the same. So then I went back and did the main story and that took five hours. So it took me, I went from 93 hours to five hours for my second playthrough. But, uh, in case you thought I was getting better, well, again, let me remind you, I am at 116 on, on this playthrough. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's taken a while. It's taking a while. Uh <sighs> You'll beat this, and I'm here for it. Hey, Shadow, thank you for the vote of confidence. I, uh, I did the DLC before the regular map. That wasn't on purpose. It's just that the way the first DLC is... The way the game is structured, the first DLC is built onto the original map. And... Because I have a high level of natural curiosity and uh, love to find secrets, I found I found the the DLC. Uh, I found the secret entrance to the DLC really early on, and because I'm super stubborn, I refuse to back out of the I refuse to back out of the DLC path once I was onto it, and. Uh, so I ended up having to do that first. <laughs> Did you do it without a key mechanic? <laughs> uh, well, I see. I don't know because the thing is, I like, sometimes I let people tell me stuff about a game after I've beaten it, but I knew I had more stuff to do in this one, so all of the like no spoilers rules are are still in effect for this game 
So if there are like items and mechanics and stuff that I don't know, no one is supposed to tell me about them yet. Usually, usually when I get all the way through a game, um, if I don't have any specific plans to play it again, then I, I usually let people tell me about the stuff I missed after I, after I complete my first playthrough. Um, unless it's a game, unless it's a game where I know there's additional content that I, that I need to do. Or, um, if it's something that I know I'm doing a challenge run of, then I, then I don't want extra information. In case you couldn't tell, I've I've climbed this tower a lot. <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with this tower, hey. Oh no. I knew I undershot that. So I normally do stream, I normally stream on Friday nights. It's Thursday night for me right now. Technically Thursday morning, but, you know, it still feels like the night time for me. I normally do stream on Friday nights, but I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of IRL stuff going on for me, so. Um, after tonight, I probably won't be back until Sunday night. And, I. Uh, not sure what we're going to play on Sunday night. Um, but there will probably only be three streams next week. Uh, probably Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And one night will be Pizza Tower. One night will be Dark Souls. And I don't know what the third night will be. Maybe some Jump King and something else. Maybe Punch Out. I don't know. Hey, Sly Hippo, welcome in. Uh, I don't believe it. I think you're just a god gamer. Uh, it was a... Uh, must be very hard for anyone who watches the stream regularly to think that kind of thing. <laughs> With another chat, I wouldn't dream of it. I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, 
We are one week away, though. We are. Our, uh... Our baby is due next week, so that's gonna, you know... October's gonna be... October's gonna be a weird month on the stream. As we, uh, as we adjust to all the changes that's gonna bring about to our life. We definitely have patience. That's my one superpower. That's the one thing. That's the power. That's the one superpower that I will brag about. I am not very talented. I am not very clever. But I have... I have the patience of a stone. It's not really patience. Because I do... I do... I do complain a lot and lose my temper a lot. I do, uh... There are there there is a lot of heartache and tears displayed on this stream, so I don't I I think in, in it it's not necessarily patience, but definitely persistence. Uh, I I feel like for me to claim patience, I would have to accept my struggling a lot more graciously than I do. <laughs> hey, thank you for the congrats. Thank you for the congrats. We are. Naturally, we're very excited. <laughs> it's all hard the way you get through games, Shadow says. Uh. This uh, area here with all the cats in it is like the toughest part of the game. <sighs> the the area like the areas up above this are it's like they're more difficult because they're unfamiliar. <laughs> but like this area here, I just I don't ever I don't get better at it. <laughs> I didn't think that jump was too short. No.
How many times am I gonna miss that same one? In the same way. It's one thing when you like it's one thing when you undershoot a jump and then you overshoot the, the jump. <laughs> like that. Like at least it's something different, right? So when you keep when you keep missing one jump over and over again in the same way. Not a good feeling. Ah, uh, Duncan Stamp, welcome in. Curious, do you play Dungeons and Dragons? I do not. I'm gonna have to let you down there. I uh, I never, uh, I never learned to play D and D. My, uh, I have a sister. My sister is really into D and D. Or actually, not D and D, but um, Pathfinder. My sister and her husband, they're really into Pathfinder. They, uh, they play that. I think a couple nights a week with their friends and they did try to teach me they did try to teach me one time but I was a very bad student <laughs> they sent me they sent me this like packet of like homework like explaining my character and it was way more complicated than I thought it was gonna be and I didn't read it until the last minute and I was not, I was not, I was not good at Pathfinder. <laughs> uh, play some D&D, &D, it's a lot of fun, Shadow says. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, like, it's, it, I guess it was, it's, like, potentially interesting to me, but... I just never, uh, I just never made a group of, like, friends in real life who were, who were into it, because, like, uh, like I said, my sister's into it, but she didn't get into it until, um, until we were grown up, and, you know, moved out and living on our own far away from each other, so... <laughs> the biggest mistake is overwhelming new people with all the information. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, you know, I think it's partially my fault. I uh, I underestimated what, what the game was going to be like and my ability to learn it all real quickly. I don't really know that I'm creative enough for D&D, &D, though. Like, um, I feel like to do really well at it, you need to be, you need to be pretty, like, on the spot, like, spontaneously creative. And I don't know that that describes me. So the waterfalls have a time-altering mechanic. Um, 
kind of. You, uh, when you pass through water, it slows you down, and that affects your, um, it affects your momentum and your physics and stuff. So you have to plan. Planning your jumps is very weird. It doesn't look different, that different, but it feels very different in this area. So every one of these jumps is a little trickier than it looks because you have to account for the timing difference that the water creates. You get mostly used to it after a while, though. A long while. No, I was having such a good pass through. Everyone I play with is online. Um, I'm curious with a Star Wars Evil D and D campaign, maybe interest you to join. <laughs> it's political slash strategic thing. Ah. Uh, I uh, I appreciate the uh, the curiosity, but uh, but no, I'd probably have to pass. I don't have the uh, I don't have the time in my life currently for for getting into something like that and taking up a new hobby, and my. Uh, my Star Wars fandom levels are pretty low. I, uh, I'm kind of an original trilogy kind of guy, and that's just about it. Um, I'm not. Uh, I haven't. I haven't kept up with all the with all the Star Wars media that's out there. It's, there's there's an overwhelming lot of it nowadays. <laughs> with all the uh, with all the the new movies and TV shows and. All that kind of stuff. But I certainly wish you luck with your campaign. Cal says it's time for me to jump off to bed. Good night, cows. Have a, a spectacular weekend, my friend. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again next week. But uh, be well until then. Thank you for being here as always. Devastating. We're going all the way back down. I was just about to say, I was just about to say how that jump, the one I just failed, <laughs> right before I attempted it, I was about to say how it's uh, one of the worst. <laughs> and then I didn't even say it, but I still failed it. So, there's a, there's a good illustration there's a good illustration of just how bad this game can be sometimes, and that's not even the worst fall I've ever endured. <laughs> and that's not the first time I've endured that particular fall. I couldn't even answer. I couldn't even I couldn't even begin to answer the question of like what is the worst fall I've ever had in the game? I couldn't even begin to answer that because I've had so many terrible falls and most of them I've had so many like dozens of times. 
because there's no there's no fall in the game that that you just make once. Every fall is a fall that like happens over and over and over again. <laughs> The game records your number of falls. So you can see, on this playthrough alone, on this playthrough alone, I've jumped 168,000 times, and I've fallen 14,000 times. But the game only counts when you faceplant as a fall. The fall counter only increments when you actually faceplant. Because sometimes you do actually have to make a jump to a lower elevation. Right, like right here. Because you actually end lower than where you started, the game could theoretically count that as a fall, but uh, it's smart enough to not... Well, I mean, I don't know if it's smart, but like that's a fall because that has a face plant at the end. Oh, yuck. Hope you like the tower. <laughs> if we ever get near my PB, I will point it out to you. <laughs> if you're curious about how far I've made it up. If we ever get near that area, I'll let you know. <laughs> this is extraordinarily bad. Now it's worse. Uh... That was a great save. That was a great save. <laughs> It could have taken me, it could have taken me hours to get back up here if I'd fallen any further. Oh, when was the last time you got a PB? Um, not the last time I played it, but not that many sessions ago. Just, uh, probably two or three sessions ago, we hit a new PB. I was, uh, I was hitting them pretty regularly, um, just, uh, like, like, two or three weeks ago. I haven't played the game very much because I've been distracted by other games. Um, wanting to finish off the Wizard of Oz and Adam's Family values, that, those kind of pushed Jump King off the schedule for a couple weeks. Um, but before that happened, I was actually doing pretty well. 
uh, most nights. I would I would make it a little higher um, almost every night. Just by like not 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 like screen sire, but just like I would I would reach like one platform higher on the same screen every night. Like a tiny little a tiny little baby victories. But uh if you wanna persist with this game, that's the kind of stuff you have to celebrate. <laughs> You have to celebrate those moments because otherwise you will have no fuel to keep you going. <laughs> That was a bad jump to miss. I uh, I don't. Oh no, that was bad too. I was gonna say I don't. Just don't say anything. Well, they gotta say I don't ever miss that jump. Some jumps are bad to miss because they come with horrible consequences. Some jumps are bad to miss because they're really easy jumps that you have no excuse for missing. <laughs> and even though there's not, no in-game consequence, you feel negative emotions inside. <laughs> No. No. Goodness. Where did all this luck come from? Where was all this where was all this luck when we were playing Punch Out? If I was half as lucky during Punch Out as I as I am lucky right now, I would have KO'd Tyson in one hit. Uh, I know, I say I saved it twice. I don't even think that's I don't even think that's legal.
typically when I take a long break from this game, usually when I come back to it, I play really well. Um, I'm not doing so great at this uh, cat area, though. <laughs> but, like, the, historically the pattern has been that, like, I'm most likely to make progress in the first, like, hour or two when I come back to the game after a long break. It's weird how that works. a shame.
I'm, I'm, I'm making anti-progress. No, I never missed that jump. Did I do something wrong? I say that as if there is any jump that I have actually never missed. Every every possible jump that you can fail, I've failed a dozen times in a hundred different ways. So I can't really honestly say where that level of shock came from.
Oh. Up, up, and away. Oh. No! How? Why? That's supposed to be a free jump. I didn't even think it was over. I didn't even think it was possible to overshoot that. doing really bad with those jumps near the gargoyles and like those are bad jumps to do bad on because the the consequence for missing those is back to the tower <laughs> to the tower. <laughs> uh. I know this game so well at this point that like the millisecond that I that I pass any jump the, the very instant I know I'm going to fall, I know exactly which pixel of the map I'm going to land on. <laughs> Even when it's 12 streams down below. <laughs> I know... Uh, I know the very location that every failed jump is going to take me to. Hey, welcome in. Was that a chinny chin? Oh, I learned from my mistake, too. I never played this game after the first five minutes.
I envy, I envy your wisdom. <laughs> I envy your wisdom. If you count all three maps as a single game, this is my longest playthrough on the stream. <laughs> I mean, even if you don't, this is the game I've spent the most time with. Um, uh, the the second most. Um, it's, it's getting close. It's getting close to being the first most. The game we spent the most time with on the stream is uh, was Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, we played that for about 270 hours. But this game here, I'm 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 close to 220 hours in this game. <laughs> and there is considerably less content. <laughs> hey Mark, welcome in. It's difficult to know exactly, like, how many hours some games have been played on the stream for, because, like, I usually remember how long a first playthrough lasts, but there are lots of games that we've played multiple times on the stream, either just because it's fun to replay them, or because, or usually it's because I'm trying to do it on a harder difficulty or complete a deathless challenge. So, like, like the original Contra, I beat that game for the first time in about five or six hours. But, I mean, we have played so many hours of Contra on the stream so that I could do uh, Deathless and 100% and low percent. Like, all the different, like, all the, like, practice for the different accomplishments took hours and hours and hours each. So, but I don't, like... I never remember how many hours any of those challenges take. I usually only remember the first playthrough. Or like, you know, like Battletoads. I've played Battletoads on the stream like two dozen times. I've never done a challenge run of Battletoads, but I mean, every playthrough of Battletoads is a challenge. So, but like, I know it took 95 hours to beat Battletoads for the first time. But then, like, I don't know how much we've played it after that. I stopped paying attention. You completed a challenge in Battletoads? What challenge did we do in Battletoads? I mean, I've done one credit in Battletoads, but that wasn't really a, a challenge. Uh, yeah, I mean... <clears throat> Yeah, that was a goal. I, I don't I don't think about it the same way I do my regular challenges though. I guess I really like I do try to go for one credit in a lot of games, but I don't like I don't really consider it a challenge run unless it's one life or better. Because like, you know, like we did one credit in Plock too, but I don't know, I don't think about them the same way at that at that level. Which is weird. I mean, I mean, I should, because one credit in Battletoads is harder than damageless in a lot of other games. Uh... Tried to show the Contra series to my friend the other day through the collection of PlayStation 4. And think it was very good. I love the Contra series. Well, I'm glad to hear you love it, Mock. I'm a big fan of Contra. I, uh, I like the earlier games a lot. I haven't played the whole series, but Contra 1 and Super C on the NES 
are two of my favorite games. I love those two games very, very much. After that, I'm a little, like, it's just kind of okay. Like, Contra 3 is okay. I don't like it as much as the NES games. But, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good game. I just don't like it as much. And, uh... I like Contra Hardcore on the Genesis uh, a little more. That one is, uh, that one's really good. The thing I don't like about Contra 3 is it's too much, it's too much gimmick and not enough run and gun. Like, level, level 1 in Contra 3 is amazing. Contra 3, lo level 1 of Contra 3 is like a master class in how to make a fantastic action level. It is, it is exquisite. It is so good. And then, the rest of the game just doesn't live up to it. Like, level, level 2 and level 5 are like those top-down levels. They're not a lot of fun. Level 3 is mostly like climbing and dangling from stuff. I don't, I don't know. That's not very fun. Level 4 is a vehicle level. It's a little better, but the boss is just horrifically difficult. And then level 6 is like, alright, but level 6 is a boss rush, and I hate that Ridley fight on level 6. Every time I think about playing Contra 3, I think like, it might be okay, and then I'm like, oh yeah, the Ridley fight, never mind. I don't even want to play the game because I hate that Ridley fight so much. Uh, hardcore is, I like hardcore way better. Like the Contras on the PlayStation 2 as well. I haven't gotten to those. I uh, I haven't gotten to those yet. I want to play them one day though. They're on my to-do list. Uh, I always look at it as beat the game, 1cc, no death, no damage. Those are my kind of tiers of the versions of the game depending on the game. Yeah, I normally, so, like, I normally want a one credit clear in most of the stuff I play. Um, like, that's sort of, like, the, that's sort of the baseline that I, that I like to start off with, start out with most games. Unless, unless it's really terrible. I'm usually I'm usually not fully happy until I hit the one credit. But I don't um I don't start to really think about them in terms of challenge attempts until I'm going to until I'm going for no death. Just a, I mean, just the in the way that I talk that I talk about them. Do you like the Metal Slug series? I've never played a Metal Slug game actually. I think I probably would like it. It looks kind of similar to Contra, but uh, I've never I've never tried one yet. I'm gonna try the game on the Contra Contra 4 on the DS someday. Yeah, I haven't played that one either. I got a lot of catching up to do. I got a lot of catching up to do. Well, my friends, um, it's almost five o'clock. It's almost five o'clock, everybody. So it's about time to call it a night. The anthology collection of Metal Slugs, one of the best play to, way to play a bunch of them. I think I have, I think I have some of them on the Switch from like the Arcade Archive series. Um, I was buying, I was buying a lot of games in that series. 
for a while, but uh, I didn't get around to playing any of them yet. So I'm, I might have some on my Switch that I haven't played. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to wrap up. I'm sorry to leave when a couple people just got here, but uh, 5 a.m. is my, my quitting time, and that's where we are. So we're going to call it a night, my friends. Thank you very much for being here. It's always uh, great to have good company. We did... Uh, a Punch-Out wasn't great, but... Like, I didn't achieve anything new, but... It was good practice nonetheless, right? I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to call it good practice. Have a good rest, Frowny. Thank you for the stream. Thank you, Shadow. Uh, have a good night. Thank you, Mock. Thank you, Mock. So normally I would stream on a Friday night, but I'm probably not going to be here tomorrow. Definitely won't be here tomorrow night. I was thinking if I had some extra time, I might would do an earlier stream in the afternoon. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath for that. <laughs> you know, you might, there's a very, very low chance you might see me tomorrow afternoon. Uh, for something random if I have a little bit of extra time. But don't cancel any of your other plans because it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> but I will try to be here next week. Um, probably Sunday night. Uh, Monday at the latest. We're going to do Pizza Tower. We'll do Dark Souls 2. And maybe another run like tonight with Jump King and Punch Out. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'll try and let you know in the Discord. I'm going to send this over to, uh, this is a stream I haven't seen live in a while. Vintage uh, RPG, I think, is celebrating uh, four years of streaming. So we'll head this way for a celebratory stream. They're doing... Um, I don't know, they're doing some sort of craft type project at the moment. But it says 10 hours of crab games. Also, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but uh, Vintage is a very vintage is a very cozy, chill type of uh, streamer. Positive vibes, usually kind of laid back. So a good place to unwind after being tortured with the kind of horrible nonsense I play. <laughs> Be well, everybody. Thank you one last time. Have a great weekend. And that's it for tonight. It's time to head out. Let's go on an adventure.